This is a Supro 1605 RJ64 Reverb. This is an amp that I recommend people not buy. I've said that these things don't last, they're poorly assembled, they catch on fire. Very nice man owns this amp. It caught on fire. He left it on, didn't play any or anything. He just left it on like a day or two and it caught on fire, started smoking, he said. Now, in general, I don't work on these. And it's possible that this is a warranty thing. It's a fairly new amp. We're going to find out if it's a warranty repair or not. But uh, since he's brought me 10 vintage 60s fenders to work on, I said, you know, I'd, I'll bend my own rules. I'll take a look at this, see if it's something simple or if I can help you with the warranty documentation and all that fun stuff. So let's just take a look and see what's going on. Let me remove the uh, nine screws to hold this rear panel in place. Now, before pulling this panel off, I'm going to slightly loosen the four screws, two on each side that hold the chassis to the sides, because that's also going to compress this wood against this wood. All right, let's take this off and see what we see. Well, there's your trouble. That cap is trying to explode. You can see the top of it's all domed and not flat. It should look like a small version of its big brother there with a nice flat top. You can see the same flat tops on the others, but this one is vented and that cap is toast. You can see here a lack of a toothed washer on this input jack and it is not a switchcraft. It's a generic jack and the, all the speaker jacks are the same way. These like to go loose in uh, the current uh, Supros. And while these sockets very closely resemble belt and Michael X, they have this weird plasticky grainy texture. These are not belt and Michael X. These are some kind of copycat. I don't know what material that's made of. I don't know how long that's going to last. Kind of discolored on this side compared to this side. I don't think it's heat related. I think it's just crappy plastic. And you know, it's a shame that they cut some corners on the jacks and I bet that cap is barely rated for the voltage present. Uh, these are Rubicon caps. So not bad caps at all. And the uh, PCB is, I would say, medium quality. It's not the thickest. It's not the best laid out, but it, I don't see any glaring mistakes. And it's certainly in better quality than what Fender and Marshall have been using. You know, the assembly uh, is clean. This thing should be a lot better than it is, but when the crucial jacks uh, for the speaker and the input are not reliable connections, and when you have caps which go bad and blow the hell up when an amp is left on for a day or two, you know, should you leave an amp on? on should you leave your amp on for a couple of days? No, it's because you're you know you'll have a high utility bill for no reason, but the amp should survive it just fine. I typically leave big uh, amps that I've restored on for 12 to 24 hours to, just to make sure that they're not going to have a problem like this uh, before an amp goes back out. I, you know, I torture test it. But just leaving a brand new amp powered on for a day or two should not be a torture test. Now, I've got to pull this chassis out so I can see what condition the output tube there is in, whether the output tube failed and took out this cap, or this cap failed, took out the output tube, or if the tube's fine, you know, so I'm not quite done with my diagnostic, but uh, that's a pretty easy one to find there. The output tube is this Pisvane, what they're calling a 6V6 GT. I don't know if it's any good or not. What's really weird is the getter is here as opposed to up top. So it's got like a halo getter down here on the side. That's unusual. I don't see any flex on the inside or any discoloration. The tube may be fine. One oddity, this appears to be a cathode-biased amp. Uh, pin 8 here, the cathode, is tied to the positive side of this diode, which goes to ground, and then goes to this cap. And I've got some resistance there, about 500 ohms. But I don't see a 500 ohm resistor that's suitable to be a across that um, diode, you know, across that, in parallel with that cap. It might be elsewhere on the board. Uh, might be on the other side of the board. I don't know, but I would expect to see a 2-watt to 5-watt resistor 
for the cathode there, and I just don't see it anywhere in here. I've looked. I have found one other resistor which is discolored here. Uh, I don't know what it's doing in the circuit. I'd have to get the schematic. I will see if there is a published schematic for this or if I can get my hands on one. But uh, first, I'm going to see if this amp is still in warranty, in which case Supero can fix it. If Supero can't fix it, as thanks to the owner for all the very nice vintage amps he sent in, I'll be glad to fix it. I just don't want to charge him for anything here if it's a warranty thing. But if it's a warranty thing and he can get this fixed under warranty, then he should sell it or just send it back to them because this thing is just not reliable um, with its current design. And sorry, that's just the way of the world. I don't make physics. I just enforce it. I'm kidding. Physics is self-enforcing. As always, thanks for watching.